Hey, what's going on everyone? Misha Wilson here and welcome to another episode of the Misha Wilson Show. Now, if you've ever wanted to be able to create a raving fan customer base so you can make more sales, create more profits, and at the end of the day, have a much more powerful business, stick around and watch this video through till the very end. Now, if this is your first video that you've ever watched, my name's Mish Wilson. Over the course of the last few years, I've done over $15 million in total sales online. And one of the things that I like to think I've gotten pretty good at is turning my customers and my clients into, you know, instead of them just being customer and clients, really having them be true fans of the business, what we do, who we are, what we stand for, what we stand against, which in turn allows us to make more sales to existing customers, create more value, you know, provide more of an experience and create more of an impact for us in our business. And that's exactly what I'm gonna show you exactly how to do in today's video. So with that said, let's go ahead and dive right in. Welcome to the Misha Wilson Show, where we show you how to create massive success online so you can enjoy the lifestyle of your wildest dreams. So this is actually a follow-up video from a post I did a few weeks ago, and I posted on my Facebook feed the power of just essentially being yourself. Right, and the message was very simple and it was just letting people know, look, be yourself and understand that some people will love you, some people will hate you, some people you know, will like you, some people might kind of not like you, and don't necessarily worry about what everyone else thinks. And the PS line in that post was essentially, you know, PS, the actual real profit is in when a bunch of people hate you. And that PS line obviously drew a bunch of attention, right? People have been asking me, Misha, why would I make money if people hate me? Why would my business be more powerful if people hate me? Why would you know I grow my business? Why would I be able to grow my business if more people hated me? And it all comes down to one of the most powerful principles in marketing, one of the most powerful principles when it comes to influence and something that I think you see now in today's crazy world, literally more than any other time. And that comes down to the singular word of polarization. All right, so let's first, before we touch on polarization, let's touch on what you do not want to be and how you do not want to pre present yourself when it comes to marketing. So the last thing you want to be in your marketing is the guy that everyone kind of thinks is all right right? If you're the person that everyone kind of thinks is all right, you might make a few sales here and there, but you're not going to be the person that people buy from over and over and over again. You're not going to be the person who people evangelically spread the message of. You're not going to be the person that people follow. You're not going to be the person who people tune in to listen to. You're not going to be the person who ultimately creates an impact on your customer's life. When essentially you're the person who everyone just kind of thinks is all right, you know, you don't have any haters, but unfortunately you don't have any true fans. So firstly, that's what you do not want to be. And then if we can operate based on, all right, that's not what we want to be. The question obviously becomes, you know, who do we want to be? And the truth is that we want to be a very specific someone to our customer, right? We want to intentionally understand what our customer is looking for and also understand, you know, who we actually want to attract with our marketing. And then we want to live in to being that person in a way that is not trying to be everything to everyone all of the time. All right, so the perfect example of this, and I'm gonna say his name, and the minute I say his name, half of the audience is gonna to be totally triggered, and half of the audience is going to absolutely love it. But the perfect example of this is, you know, the Donald, right? Donald Trump. Uh, love him, hate him. Whether you think he won the election and was rigged, or whether you think he lost the election fair and square, love him or hate him, the guy is extremely polarizing polarizing and he you know probably above all else understands the power of polarity and understands the impact and power in being a certain someone 
to a certain group of people. If you look at his messaging, he is not trying to essentially win over the people who don't like him. He's not trying to be more likable to the people that don't like him naturally. He's not trying to, you know, cater to the people who don't like him to hopefully make some of those people like him. Instead of all of that, he's focused crystal clearly on essentially kind of, you know, leaning in to the messaging that the people that already follow him like, leaning in to the style of message that already resonates with the people who like him, leaning in to more of what creates, once again, a true fan culture base within his fans versus just constantly trying to go ahead and make everyone happy all of the time. And if you look at the type of language patterns that make his people happy, oftentimes it's throwing rocks at common enemies, right? He's talking about, you know, the damn Democrats, that other, you know, side over there. And I'm not political, and so don't take this as a political thing. I can't stand politics in general. I think the whole thing is a freaking scam. But he's constantly talking about you know, the damn Democrats. He's constantly talking about the other side. He's constantly, you know, putting names and little labels on, you know, the people that he was running against, right? Sleepy Joe, I think it was a creepy Kamala. I don't remember, I wasn't tuning in. Spooky Kamala, whatever it was, right? He's extremely unforgettable in his messaging and he's extremely polarizing in his messaging but based on the fact that he's polarizing, based on the fact that he's not pulling punches, based on the fact that he knows very crystal clearly what his audience wants to hear, what's going to entertain his audience, and what's going to once again fire up his audience, and then he just gives that to him, over time what happens is that audience tends to grow based on a viral effect. So what happens is that you know, when you're the person who is either loved or hated, right? So instead of just being that person, another case dude, this is Conor McGregor. Instead of just being that person who everyone kind of thinks is kind of all right, if you're the person who's willing, you know, to do the crap talking, you don't have to do crap talking, you can just talk about what you stand for and what you stand against very clearly. But if you're that person, what naturally happens is people start to talk about you. And when people start to talk about you, what naturally happens is, you know, more and more and more and more conversation starts, meaning your name comes up more and more and more and more often to more and more and more people, to bigger and bigger and bigger audiences, virally growing your message. And then what happens is, guess what? As your name comes up to more and more and more people, more and more and more often, half of the people that your name comes up to absolutely love you. Half of the people, you know, where your name comes up absolutely hate you. But because when that natural polarizing effect takes place with that new group of people who are now talking about you for the very first time, guess what happens? The whole thing self-perpetuates itself. Half of those people love you, half of those people hate you. So those new people are now talking about you more. Now that those new people are talking about you more, your name gets spread out to the next segment of people. Half of the next segment of people love you and hate you. And in that divide, in that you know, God, I can't stand this person, or God, I love this person, what happens is that you naturally gain attention. Because despite what you think of Donald Trump, I can promise you that just about everyone has heard just about everything that he said. When you are disliked, people listen to you, and when you are loved, people listen to you. When you're forgettable, the last thing that people do is pay attention to you. So understand in your marketing, if you're always trying to please everyone all the time, if you're always trying to you know, not take a stance on a topic, if you're not telling people what you stand for, most importantly, what you stand against, the fastest way to create polarity is to get crystal clear on what you stand against and then message what you stand against in your marketing. But if you're constantly trying to make sure that you stand for everything that hopefully, you know, everyone kind of stands for so that you can kind of always make everyone happy all of the time for the most part, guess what's going to happen? There's going to be zero polarization. There's going to be zero line in the sand. There's going to be no identity around who you truly are and what you truly stand for and, of course, what you truly stand against. 
And then based on the fact that there's zero line in the sand, based on the fact that there's no identity when it comes to who you are and who you're not, the people who would naturally feel bonded to you because they are like you, because they're similar to you, because they share the same values, because they share the same common enemies, because they share the same points of view, all of those people who would naturally feel more bonded to you, well, they just kind of don't necessarily feel one way or another about you because you're not actively voicing what you stand for and what you stand against. So understand, the fastest way to grow your business or grow the power, and I should say almost polarization within your marketing, the fastest way to grow the impact of how well you can kind of convert a customer into a true loyal raving fan comes down to how prolific and polarizing you are. And the more polarizing you are, yes, the more haters you will absolutely have, but the more haters you have, if you do things correctly, guess what? The more people will also love you, and the more people that love you, those are the people who are gonna buy over and over and over again. So get clear on what you stand for and get clear on what you stand against. Get clear on who you are and where you fit in the actual marketplace. Get clear on what your identity is and who you are not in the marketplace and then actively let people know what you stand for and what you stand against, understanding that some people are gonna love it and some people are gonna hate it, and it's in that polarization. It's in that, God, I can't tell whether I just you know hate this person or love this person. It's in that thing that your influence grows. So with that said, I hope you got a ton of value out of today's episode. If you did, let me know what your biggest takeaway was in the comments section below. If you're watching on Facebook, give me some comments, likes, hearts, and shares as always. And if you're watching on YouTube, don't forget to go ahead and hit that subscribe button, hit that bell icon notification button, and let me know what your biggest takeaway was in the comments section below. As always, have a great day.